probably uh, the two most important uh, faith scriptures to tell you what faith is uh, I'd like to share with you tonight and if you'll go with me to Mark chapter 11 and verse 23 Mark chapter 11 verse 22 and 23 and 24 these are good good faith scriptures and uh, we know this happened about one week before Jesus was crucified and to kind of get you the time frame that he was teaching his disciples he had them on a crash course he had to teach them everything he had and, and uh, uh, so that he can leave planet earth so he had to have some men that would act in faith amen and uh, so in verse 22 of Mark 11 and Jesus answered saying to them have faith in God now the original Greek says have the faith of God amen and, uh, and so truly I say to you verse 23 whoever says to this mountain be taken up and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes what or that what he says is going to happen it will be granted to him and I'm reading out of the New American Standard it reads a little different from the King James and New King James but let's read that again truly I say unto you whoever says to this mountain be taken up and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says is going to happen it will be granted him now verse 24 therefore I say to you all things for which you pray and ask believe that you receive them and they will be granted to you so words are very important because it begins to say I say to you whoever says to this mountain so believers are supposed to speak to their mountain whether it's financial whether you need healing in your body whether you need to cast out a devil whether you need uh, some member in the body or some by, someone in your family that needs to be saved amen you got to start speaking that over them and so you can take a mountain and diminish the mountain amen it doesn't say in the scriptures that uh, uh, you should think it you should say it amen amen you should say it with your mouth and I don't have time to get into it but you know in the scriptures uh, that we having the same spirit of faith as David did when David said I believe therefore have I spoken we too having the same spirit of faith Paul said we also believe and therefore we what speak amen so so words have a lot to do in the kingdom of God as a matter of fact you are saved by words did you know that in Romans chapter 10 verses 8 9 and 10 it says what is this faith that we speak of it's close to you even in your mouth amen that if thou shalt confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart see there's the mouth and heart okay you'll see those two elements what we just read in Mark chapter 11 verse 23 your mouth has to say what your heart believes your mouth has to speak what your heart believes that's why Paul said we having therefore the same spirit of faith faith is what we're talking about here and so we having therefore the same spirit of faith that David did we believe therefore we speak and Jesus said it that if you'll say to your mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says is going to happen it will be granted him that's the faith of God and so God also in Genesis said let there be light and what happens light bees amen all right he later said uh, let there be a firmament amen let there be lights in the heavens let there be 
uh, a sun and an earth, a moon, to keep time and seasons. Amen. And so he began to speak these things. He's, he talked uh, to birds be, and they became, and fish, and walking and creeping things upon the earth. He created these things. He created the, the, the bushes, the trees, and so forth. He created all these things by the breath of his nostrils, by the breath of his mouth. Amen? And we know in Isaiah chapter 55, it says that uh, his words, when he speaks his words, they do not come back to him void. They always come back to him what he set his words out to accomplish. So words were very, very important. And, of course, we know surrounding what he just said, he, Jesus said this in response to something that Peter just saw. Because the day before Jesus said, Have faith in God. Truly I say unto you, Whosoever will says unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Just the day before, he said to a fig tree, No man eat fruit from you hereafter. And so the next morning they're passing by the same place because they're going back and forth to Jerusalem, to Bethany. They stay at Bethany at night and go back to Jerusalem and do more stuff, you know, where he used the whip to get the money changers out and so forth, and he did other things. He kept going back to Jerusalem, going, staying at Bethany at night. I don't think the things that he was doing uh, made everybody happy. So I think I would have slept somewhere else too. <laughs> uh, Bethany was about actually about a two-mile walk not too far, and he'd come back. And by the way, he was passing by the Mount of Olives each time. And that's why he said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. He was given that as an example, have faith in God. When did, G when did God ever speak to the mountain, the Mount of Olives? Well, he did back in, um, uh, I believe it was Zechariah uh, chapter 14. And uh, it, says, it says that when on the last uh, one of the last days when Jesus returns, his, his foot shall touch when he returns. He'll touch the top of Mount of Olives and it'll split in two and waters will, will come out of it. And there's going to be a big rift valley between the Mediterranean and the Dead Sea. And the, amen, that's a big amen, right? So, Guess what happens when when water is a high place and there's a low place and then there's a conduit made between them? What's going to happen? Water's going to come downhill, right? It's still happening. Yeah, when you turned on your sink water this morning, water went from a higher place to a lower place, right? So, so here's the Mediterranean Sea. It's at sea level. Did you know the Dead Sea is about 1,100 feet lower than the Mediterranean? Guess what's going to happen when that big rift valley opens up? By the way, ge geologists have said and spoken and notated there's a big fault line from the Mediterranean to the Dead Sea. And so when that big fault line opens up, which is going to split the Mount of Olives, and now all the sea water, said ocean water, isn't that what Jesus said? Cast into the sea the seawater is going to indwell the Mount of Olives, right? Because it's going to be filling up the Dead Sea, right? Amen. Okay. I didn't really mean to get into that, but, but uh, it is a powerful word, though. I mean, it was, God has already spoken to the Mount of Olives, and it's going to be swallowed up in the sea. Powerful, huh? So uh, I just want you to be aware that that's what Jesus was saying whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Have God kind of faith when God spoke to the Mount of Olives. Has it happened yet? No, but it's going to. <laughs> I've always laughed around just talking, you know, when you're having coffee with the guys and stuff like that. If, if a, you know, Jews are good business guys, if, if they really need, you know, if they were really thinking right now, <clears throat> later on the Dead Sea is going to fill up to sea level, why don't some of those guys buy some lots around the Dead Sea and find out where the new sea level is going to be <laughs> and put some docks out there and a, you know, a, a, a restaurant, a bait camp, you know, and boat stalls and all that while, it, while the prices are really low, huh? Yeah? And then sell when the water's high, right? 
Buy when the water's low, sell when the water's high. That's <laughs> just a thought. But anyway, if they really believe the scriptures or what Jesus said, uh, they would, some Jews got to jump on this at some point. Oh, I think there's going to be some guy. Maybe they're listening to me right now on live streaming right now in, in Israel. Let's just do some, you know, checking out the, the websites. Oh, check out this dude in Texas. He's talking. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, another scripture um, is um, and found in Romans chapter 4 um, and verse 17, 417. That's Romans 417. This is talking about Abraham. How did, Abraham had great faith. He's kind of the father of faith, and it was accounted unto Abraham because he believed God. It was accounted to Abraham as righteousness. Amen. And so, in in uh, Romans chapter four, uh, we let's see this real quick. Romans chapter four. This is this is the way Abraham believed because he saw God b- believe this way. Uh, as it is written, "A father of many nations have I made you." That's God speaking about Abraham, who had had no children. Okay, listen to this. In the presence of him whom he believed, even God, who gives life to the dead. And this is the, this is the key verse. This is the key words in that verse. God calls into being that which does not exist. God calls things, now the King James says, God calls things that be not as though they were. Amen? Faith is not denying that something exists. It's proclaiming something to exist that don't exist. Does that make sense? So you're lying if you say, I, I'm not sick, I'm not sick when you're... <coughs> no, I'm not sick. That's lying. But if you say, by his stripes I'm healed... <coughs> By his stripes I am healed in the name of Jesus. You're calling things that be not as though they were. Okay, That's proclaiming, that's prophesying. It's okay to prophesy. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he said, I would that you all prophesied and forbid not to speak in tongues. Amen. So I would that you all prophesied. What's prophesying? Prophesying the truth. See, truth is just like the waters in the Mediterranean and the Dead Sea, so is the faith of the believer, amen, over material things, amen. Truth is higher than facts, amen. Truth is higher than facts. Facts are subject to change. Truth is not. Did you see that? Truth is truth. When God speaks the truth, it's truth forever. huh? But when facts are stated among men, facts are subject to change. The, the facts were that Shirley should have died six years ago. That was the facts by the doctors, by many doctors. Many doctors said, she's a goner. But the truth was, she shall live and not die. By his stripes we were healed. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. See, that's what you need to be saying, amen, even though it didn't look good, even though all the facts said she was not going to make it. The truth of God's word said that she'll make it, amen. Calling things that be not as though they were. Surely you are healed in the name of Jesus. You are made whole in the name of Jesus. That's what should be coming off of your lips. Everybody, anybody here have a business? You, you're, you're, okay, self-employed business. Speak over that business, amen? This is a business of the Lord. And it's going to be glorifying the Father every day in the name of Jesus. And I thank you now, Father God, that whatever you said, that whatever I put my hands to, I'll prosper in it, amen? You speak his word over it. Don't say what it looks like at the moment. Don't call things that are as though they are. That is not faith. Faith is not calling things that be as though they are. Calling things that are as though they are. There's no change there. What are you prophesying? 
you're prophesying, keep things the same. Amen? But faith is calling things that be not as though they already existed. Amen? That's faith. Amen? Calling things that be not as though they were. Here in the New American Standard says, and calls into being, see, calls into being that which does not exist. We, we do it all the time. We really do in a natural sense. <clears throat> one way is an easy one. Your dog. If you don't see your dog, call it. Call it into being. Rufus, come here. <laughs> see? <laughs> right? We call it. Amen? And that's what you're doing. You're calling things that are already promised to you, you're calling them into being. That which does not exist. God, I need a car. Okay. Uh, man, time is flying by. Okay. David Paul Cho became one of the, he, he's still alive and he's been the pastor of the biggest church in the world. And he began to understand these principles. And while he, uh, he was just got saved, learning faith, and he had this uh, little church that already got started. And this is what he said. This is what he said. Lord, I, I need a, uh, in this little room, one room church, little room with dirt floor and all. He said, Lord, I need a desk and I want a chair. And Lord said, what kind of desk do you want? He says, oh, I, you want me to be specific? I like the desk where you can shine it and you can see yourself in it. And I want a chair. And the Lord said, what kind of chair? He said, oh, I want one of those that's got the wheels on the bottom and twist and I can lean back and put my feet up on the desk and look like a big shot. Did you know within a week he got both? The Lord provided those because he dared to ask. I mean, I was reminding Roger of his brother. His brother came to our area before, and he spoke at one of our meetings, uh, uh, Men's Fellowship Breakfast, I think, back then. And he shared something I still remember today. It was years ago. What's your brother's name again? Henry, Henry of course. And uh, <clears throat> he looked kind of like Roger for some reason. But anyway, he uh, had... Uh, uh, been a missionary down in Mexico, right? And, and uh, what was the name of the city? Okay, I'm, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Victoria, okay. That's <laughs> so he was over this orphanage, and it was a bad year for crops because by the orphanage was a orange orchard. Bad year, bad year, not good, drought. And that's what helped run the orphanage. And there was hardly any fruit on the trees. And if there were some, they were just real small small and hard and just not sellable because they used to take the whole crop to the market and it would save the orphanage for a whole year. Nothing happened this year. And so they were down through the last... I remember he said, he, Henry told me, and all of us men, he said, we were down to our last meal, just like the woman with the meal and, and the crucial oil, land down to the last cake. And we, I'm looking at these orphans, and he began to weep. And he began to pray because he knew this was their last meal, and he was going to have to start calling people to, to pick up the kids or somebody. Maybe some family would want this one and they want that one and this one and that one. And it, was, it was looked like a crisis. They didn't have any more food. There's none on the horizon. Nobody else, you know, giving into this orphanage. He prayed, Lord, we need a miracle. We need a miracle. And Shirley's going to explain a miracle that happened this last week. Amen. I think she's got a miracle needing to be spoken. Amen. And so I want to tell you about this miracle. The next morning, after Henry prayed before the children, he woke up, he went outside to see what he was going to have to do. 
and he told a little bit more detail, but there was a man that came and knocked on the door and said, I would like to buy some oranges. And he was going to tell the man, we don't have any. And the man said, no, you need to go down. Your whole orchard is loaded with orange, ripened oranges. And he did. He ran down there to the orchard, and it was just like the old man said that wanted to buy his oranges. There's oranges laid, all the trees were laden down, almost touching the ground with these big, beautiful oranges overnight. Amen. Overnight. Amen. He was able to take, a, he sold a bunch of that old man, don't leave, don't. <laughs> whoa, 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 I, I, we'll make a deal. And they took a bunch of them to the market and they sold it and, and paid all the bills that were back and then much, much more. And they were able to save the orphanage and, and to have another wonderful year. Amen? That's real. That's a miracle. We just need to pray. We need to ask God. We need to have faith in God. Amen? Like R.W. Shambach used to say, you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. Of course, he'd yell that. I'm not going to do that and blast your ears out. Man, he was a... He was wild. He said, you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. Amen. So give God a chance and begin to, to work with him. God told me that one day. He said, work with me. Ask and start proclaiming. Amen. Calling things that be not as though they were. Amen. And asking me to do the impossible. Amen. A miracle is something that you need to happen that you can't perform. Only God can. That's true miracles that the doctors can't do, but God does. Amen? We need to have more faith in God. Surely come on up here. If you have your Bibles, please open to Isaiah chapter 55. We're going to look at verse 11. If you don't already have this scripture memorized, I encourage you to memorize it because it's one of these scriptures that has really touched my life and transformed my life. Because y'all, we must have confidence in the Word of God. The Word of God tells us that we need to come to this place. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God, okay? Now, that word in the original is faith comes by continually hearing and 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 hearing. I mean, it's this, it's, it's a never ending, what, what must you do? Well, you must continually hear the word of God. Okay, so Isaiah 55, 11 says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. You know, the more that we become people of integrity, people of our word, if, if you tell somebody you're going to do something, let's follow through. You know, he who has follow through has breakthrough. So if you're going to tell somebody you're going to do something, if you're going to tell one of your kids you're going to do something, follow through with it. Because they will come and they will remind you. I've seen my kids remind me of things, and I said, I didn't ever say that. I said, Mom, you looked at us and you shook your head. And I said, was I on the phone whenever you asked me? <laughs> yes, Mom, but you shook your head. And I thought... Don't you ever ask me anything until you know that you have my attention. <laughs> so it's very important that we become a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. And that also includes us being a doer of our word. And as we begin to proclaim the word of God, okay, so now we see, he says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of, our ma uh, out of my mouth. Okay, as we come into agreement with God's word, then God's word must be so full in us. Because the word tells us in Psalms 119.11, he says, 
hide the word of God deep in your heart so that you won't sin against him. Because he said, that which is without faith is sin. Okay? Now, the word of God tells us, he said, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Guys, y'all have to move you have to move up here, okay? You got to come closer, okay? <laughs> we love y'all. Thank you. Um, there's nothing like putting people on the spot, you know, whenever they come in. I got that from my dad. I don't know why. He just he did that a lot. So, it always encouraged me. He always would tell me, "Surely you be ready." Okay? I remember whenever I was 5 years old, okay? Trembling because my dad said, "Now you, you be ready, Shirley, cuz I may call on you to preach tonight. Five years old. I would shake, okay? He'd say, no, you, you better be ready, Shirley. You may have to lead worship tonight. And I'm thinking, I can't even play anything. I don't even know if I know the words. But he'd say, you better get, you better get ready. Just get ready. Because you never know when God's going to call upon you to do something. So as we take the word of God, we hide the word of God in our heart. He said... Let's read it again. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. What should we hide in our heart? He said, hide my word deep in your heart so that you won't sin against me. So he said, out of your belly, okay? So where are we gonna, we're going to take the word of God. And he says, now out of your belly, whenever you fill yourself up with the word of God, he says, out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water. He said, because life and death are in the power of your tongue. Can you imagine how much power that we have in our tongue? Even though you think, well, maybe your tongue's not as big as your foot. But your tongue has such great power. Because as we take the word of God, hide the word of God deep in our heart, as we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, then we will be in situations and circumstances that arise in our life where now we can speak the word of God and literally alter the course of somebody's life. Or maybe your own. The word of God tells us, okay? He said that unto him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. He said, oh, by the way, you are more than overcomers through Christ Jesus. And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the very word of our testimony. Okay, so we even call those things, as uh, Pastor Mark was just sharing earlier, we even Call those things that be not as though they already were. Well, how do we do this? Well, we got to begin somewhere. Say, well, I think it's, I'm just going to sound just nutty or something if I do this. Well, the Word of God says that we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. So he tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, he says, you know, you've got to put off the way that you used to think. Okay? So if you think it sounds a little nutty, you need to put that aside. He said, you put it, oh, let's run it down the garbage disposal, okay? Let's make sure we can never put those pieces back together again. Why? Because we need to put off the way that we used to do things, the way that we used to say things, the way that we used to act, the way that we used to reason. Even our thought process. Why? Because he says, you've got to be transformed by the word of God so that you can do what I've called you to do. Put on the new man who is in Christ Jesus. Who walks not after the flesh no more. But now we walk after the spirit. Hmm. Because the word tells us. He said, for as many as are being led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. 
Now that word there is we have to continually be led by the Spirit. It's that never-ending, non-stopping, continually meditating upon the Word of God, hiding the Word of God deep in our heart, listening to the Word, speaking the Word, declaring those things, even that be not as though they already were. So anyway, last Tuesday, I got up in the morning. I got up early, and I began to pray. That happens a lot around the house because the Spirit of God will move upon you. Now, you can do this. You can roll back over in bed, fluff that pillow up, put your head down, pull those covers up. Or you can get up out of bed and begin to pray. He says, behold, this day I set before you life and death. So what are you going to do with it? Are you going to alter the course of your life by learning to hear the voice of God and do what he tells you to do? See, I'm so moved on by the Spirit. And he says, get up, go to the hospital, go see the woman in ICU, and you need to lay hands up on her and pray for her. This was the scripture that I was given, Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not... Did you hear that? It shall not return into me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the way wherein to I sent it. So I go in. You know, you have to go get a, a nurse or somebody uh, because only there's only a few people there lighting there, and then they got to punch in the code, and then you... You have to wait and see if you're approved to go into ICU to go and see these people. So anyway, I go in there, and uh, they already had the priest in there because they had called because they didn't they didn't have hope, you know. And uh, I thought, okay, you know. We can, we can do whatever we want to do in life. But whenever we come into a place, we better arrive full of the Holy Ghost so that we can change a situation. So anyway, I finally got the approval to go in there, went in there to go and pray for the lady. But I knew what I had been sent in there to do. I'd been sent in there with the word, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. And I knew I couldn't say anything except what the word of God says about the situation. He said, I wish above all things that you would prosper and that you would be in health even as your soul prospers. So what are we going to do? Do we go in there and shake their hand and say, I'm just so sorry. Things are really looking bad. I heard what the doctor said. Oh, it's bad. No. What what, what do do you do? Well, we, we arrive at a situation like Jesus said. He went about doing good. He healed the sick. He cleansed the leper. He raised the dead. And he cast out demons. And he told us, go down and do that likewise. So what do we do? We better get out there and do what he tells us to do. So, as as you walk, as I walked in anyway, I went in to go and see the family and minister to them. And, you know, they're all, everybody's boohooing and crying and all. And I said, wait a second. Let me tell you what the Word of God says. He said that we can speak unto a situation to be removed and be cast into the sea. We can declare the Word of God. We're going to speak what the Word of God says. So literally erupts out of my belly like a volcano. Because this is what the Word of God says. If we bring the Word of God into a situation, we can change a situation because the Word of God brings change. So anyway, went in. The Word of God says, and I told them, walked them through methodically. The Word of God says, we shall Lay hands upon the sick. And the word of God says, and they shall recover. He didn't say that they might. He didn't say that they possibly could. He said, and they shall recover. 
So do we have any confidence in the Word of God? Well, it all depends. How much time have you spent in the Word? Are we fully persuaded that what God has promised, that He's also well able to perform it? Or are we just going to go and sit down and say, well, I remember a scripture that I remember I was in vacation Bible school one day. Well, blurt it out of your mouth if that's all you know. Why? Because if you'll take it and you'll mix it with faith, it's the word of God, and God's word will not return void. But if we'll take the word of God, hide the word of God deep in our heart, we will see situations and circumstances change. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, not a dead one. So we walk into a situation and we can raise the dead because that's what he told us to do. Well, what if we don't know what to do? We'll at least show up. Because if you don't know what to do, maybe the Holy Ghost will show you what to do if you walk through the doorway. You, you don't have to have it all figured out. Do you know that Jesus walked by places and it was a testimony to the people just because he showed up, just because he passed by? Do you know the very shadow of Peter fell upon people and they were healed? Don't be afraid that you won't have the right words to say. Let's just allow the Holy Ghost to do it. What he's telling you to do, you show up, you lay hands upon the people. What if you don't know, even know what to pray? Well, he said, lay hands upon the sick. He didn't say that you had to give a 30-minute dissertation. He said, you lay hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. He said, but whatever you do, you do it in faith. He said, because that which is without faith is sin. So if you're going to lay hands upon them, buddy, you better be you better be laying hands in faith. Why? Because somebody's life may be dependent upon you acting in faith. Faith is an act. Remember, I shared it earlier. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He said that we are to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Well, anyway, they couldn't get the lady transferred out. They finally got her transferred out. In fact, I think some of the family will probably show a testimony on Sunday because they're coming back. And anyway, make a long story short, they were going in to amputate her foot. But they happened to text me right at the right time. Now, mind you, we had not had cell phone service because in the Metroplex where we were coming back from the doctor, we had not had cell phone service. I couldn't get any calls. I couldn't get any texts, nothing. Mark and I were going to go and eat before we left town. Well, we were hungry. But we said, you know, we just need to, let's just drive. Let's just keep going. Then we were going to, we had plans. We were going to stop and eat in this place. Well, we passed the exit. My husband does not like to turn around and go backwards. So we keep going. And then we miss the next exit, and we keep going. We never miss that exit. We just kept going. Pretty soon, ding, 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 all these text messages start coming through on my phone. She's about to be brought in for surgery. I said, what kind of surgery? They send me back, amputation. I thought, oh, you foul devil. You, you rotten, sorry, no good, lower than a snake's belly. That's what the devil is. And he wants to bring fear, and he wants to bring torment, and he wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. Y'all, had we stopped to eat, I'd have missed the call. They already had her intubated when I got the call. They had her going in for surgery. The surgeon was about to come in to cut her foot off. She was already out of it. She had already had the anesthesia. And I'm on the phone, and I'm saying, don't you let them cut her foot off. Stop the surgery. And they're like, Shirley, what do we do? I don't care if you got to bust the door down. Because the word of God comes up out of your belly. 
And all I could remember was the Holy Ghost moved upon me to be led by the Spirit to get in there to go and destroy the works of the devil before she ever left. Now, I'm not saying that that's always the case, y'all. But when you're led by the Spirit, you hear His voice. You can, you can stake your life upon it. Because when He told me I could have whatever I said, I staked my life upon it. I would live. I said, I will live. And I will not die. And I will declare the works of the Lord. So I got one of our friends... Uh, Dr. Harden on the line. I knew he was a surgeon. I knew he dealt with other types of alternative therapies. I called him. I told him what was going on. He ran me through a few questions, answered them. He said, immediately call him back, tell him, do da 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 da. And before you knew it, y'all, she has her foot today. They said the infection had hit her bone, it had gone up, and that's why they were going to have to amputate it. But do you know, Friday night I got a call from the family and they said, Shirley, they just got the cultures back. They cannot find the infection in the bone anymore. Well, then they called me this afternoon and they said, Shirley, we just want you to know she's doing so well. They're talking about sending her home. She was facing a month-long treatments very intensive treatments. And I said, make sure that she's well enough to come home. I'm not there. Y'all are there. Talk to the doctors. God gives us counsel. He says in the multitude of counsel, there is wisdom. In the multitude of counsel, we're going to find peace somewhere. And there, but they said, Shirley, but all the doctors are blown away because her blood sugar is back to normal now. Her kidney function is back. Everything, everything is back. Y'all, God is good. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the way wherein to that I have sent it. I encourage you. I don't get through all my scriptures. Praise the Lord. Amen. But you know, I want to do something. We have some people here today, and you're facing some difficult situations. I don't know what you're going through. I just know that by the Holy Ghost, you have been brought here tonight because you're facing something that didn't look like it's a good report. But the Word of God tells us in Luke chapter 11 and verse 2, He says, And they obtained a good report by faith. When they told me my liver had shut down, I asked God for a new one. I knew he had plenty of body parts. When they told me my kidneys weren't functioning, I said, God, either fix the ones that I have or give me new ones. You have more than enough. He said, ask that your joy would be made full you have not because you ask not ask will you ask him what do you have need of tonight will you dare to believe God that impossibilities must bow their knee to the name of Jesus Amen. everything that has a name must bow to the name of Jesus if you're facing something you need something you need a touch from God would you stand to your feet with me We're believing God. God. God We we need total restoration. Let's believe God. Do you need need a new organ? Do you need a new socket? Maybe you need a joint. Maybe you need a new brain. Maybe you need some new eyeballs. Whatever you need. The Word of God says, ask. Be bold enough to ask. Would you ask? Will you ask the giver of life? Will you ask the one that is our healer? Will you ask the one that says with him, nothing will be impossible to them that believe? Will you dare to ask? Will you dare to believe? Will you dare to join your faith with Him? Yes. Father, today yes. we Father, join our faith with you, Lord. Tonight, Father. Lord, we, we believe you. For a new need. Yes, Lord. We ask We're asking you, you Lord. Lord, for Father, a miracle to intervene this in this family situation. Father, we ask, oh Lord God, 
that you will intervene, O oh Lord God, with the miracle I need, Father, tonight, Lord. Bring your provision, Father, that will serve our need right now in Jesus' name. Be bold enough to ask him, amen. Father, if you need a roller you. chair, ask him for a roller chair. Yes. If you need a, a move of the Holy Ghost in your family, ask for it in Jesus' name. We need to be more on the asking part. Ask God for dangerous prayers. Dangerous being that you just dare to believe God for a miracle for your family, for the need that's in your life right now. Whatever it is, God is able not only to promise, but to perform the, the, the provision that you need in your life. In the name you know, of the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, just thank ask you him Jesus, right now. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just sensing Jesus. that somebody's having some trouble with, I believe, I'm sensing it like right here. I believe it has something to do with your shoulder. And uh, I just want you to just believe God. You, Who is Father. it here that's you, dealing Jesus. with a, a you, concern, Father. a problem Jesus. with, uh, are you, anybody dealing with a, a joint problem? I believe it's your shoulder. Right shoulder. Oh, and Cheryl's like, yeah, me. Look at me. I've got my arm in a sling tonight. <laughs> well, let's believe God. Anybody else? Anybody else want to believe God? Thank you, Lord. Lord, let's just you, believe Father. it. Lord, we're asking you, Lord, for just a thank total you, repair Jesus. of Cheryl's shoulder. Mm. Lord, in her arm, Lord, Father, I thank you, Lord, Lord, that you are the God life, that regenerates. God. You're the God that heals. You're the God, God that brings healing and restoration to every cell of our being. To be and we whole speak and release healing now over Cheryl's Jesus body in Christ's Jesus' name. name. Cheryl's Lord, we just thank you for it now. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You, Father. Father, now we just, just begin thank to you, thank him. Just begin to thank him. Amen. Begin to thank him. Praise him. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Amen. I just see somebody's gut that's, being healed. That's, somebody's been having a lot of trouble with your gut, with digestion, and the Lord's just healing you right now. Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord. Father, Lord, we just thank you for that. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Who is that that's been having problems with your gut? You've been having a lot of uh, Sandy. Sandy, just put your hand Jesus. right up on your stomach right now. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this in the Father, name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we thank you for healing, for restoration. God, I thank you, Lord, for showing up. Bring hope. Lord, and that you do more than what we'd ask or think. God, I thank you now, Lord, for bringing total restoration Jesus to Sandy. Lord, in every her area wisdom, of her Father. being, Lord, we thank you for raising her up. Jesus Lord, that she will boldly proclaim thank your you, work. Father. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God loves it when thank people you, Jesus. call upon him. Somebody else is dealing with some problems with your neck. Your who's, who's been dealing with problems with your neck? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's been stiffness, Father, pain in your ask. neck. Father, we ask. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Who is that? Jesus. Somebody. Who's dealing with pain in your neck? I know you're here. Don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to dare to believe God. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for that neck right now. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing healing and restoration. Lord, just a totality, Lord, of healing and restoration. Walk we out the you, rest Lord. of your faith the rest Lord, of this week and begin to keep thanking him and praising him. Keep saying the same thing over and over. Amen. That, that energizes your faith and also brings the answer. Amen. Don't speak anything negative about what you've just prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. And if no. somebody just asks you, what did you pray for? You just keep saying, I have the answer from the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to encourage you. I believe that the Spirit of God has moved us into a time of change. Okay? And I believe that we are scratching the surface and we're going to see some changes unlike anything that we've ever seen. And over the past few weeks I've been noticing this. It's, it's a shift. It's a time. There's a moving by the Spirit. And He's been dealing with us. And as I began to pray, He would have me to pray for people. And it has been every day that the people that I've been moved upon to pray for, many of them I haven't heard from in a very, very long time, have called me. Amen. Thank you, Father. And this has been happening. Y'all, we're, we're in a time that is a very different time. There's a time of the Spirit of God speaking to us, calling us to hear His voice and do what He tells us to do. 
So as we pray and the Spirit Thank of God you, begins to move upon us Thank to begin you, to pray Father. for Thank other you, people, Jesus. I want to encourage you, favor begin to pray for, for those people that the Spirit of God is telling you about. Don't just think about them. You stop and you pray. You bless them. You release them. You forgive them. Thank I don't care what they've done to you. I don't care how much money they stole from you. Forgive them. And let's move forward. <laughs> and let's allow the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. to move upon us and show us exactly what we need to do for this day, for this hour. What are you going to do? We're going to do what the Holy Ghost tells us to do. Amen. And Wayne, would you come forward? Thank you, Jesus. The offering. Thank you, Jesus. Thank and uh, you, Jesus. if you will prepare uh, an offering to the Lord, amen, you can be seated. And, and, and I want, uh, I want to share with you as, as Wayne's coming. Uh, for three nights in a row, I had been dealt with before Sunday morning service. Thank you, Father. The Spirit of God kept dealing with me. I kept seeing a crazy man. And I kept seeing uh, a man trying to come at me, come into the church, trying to cause danger to the people in the church. So for three days, I continued to pray. And really go after the Lord and just say, Lord, what, what is this? Is there something we need to be aware of? Praying, fasting, seeking the Lord and all. And then finally, I knew uh, I had another dream Sunday morning, uh, early Sunday morning. And I knew there were several things that happened Sunday morning that I knew that that was the day that he had been warning us of to be very attentive. So anyway, we began to pray. Uh, Mark was in the prayer room early that morning morning and just praying calling upon the Lord for divine protection upon the house and upon the church and upon the people well that morning Sunday morning a crazy drunk man shows up at the Baptist church threatening with a gun threatening to kill people he was caught and taken away and but he was also threatening to go to true value and kill people but y'all the word of God in the, in the night, Saturday, uh, Sunday morning, so Sunday morning early, I had a dream, and in the dream, the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me, and I had a message in tongues, and then the interpretation, and the interpretation was Luke ten nineteen. And the word of the Lord says, Behold, I give unto you authority over all the power of the enemy. And nothing. And nothing will by any means hurt you. Amen. So we knew that it was, it, the word of God says, it's not flesh and blood that we war against. It's principalities, it's powers, it's rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now let's, let's make sure that crazy person could have easily come into this house. But I believe that as God moved upon us to pray, pray. to seek the Lord, that not only did he not come here, but he didn't hurt anybody in any other there. house of the Lord that God protected his people that morning. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit this week. Yes. And just pray Amen. when God moves upon you. Pray. Amen. So let's pray over the offering. Father, we just thank you, Lord, now for blessing the giving yes. tonight and tithes and offerings, gifts and seed sowing. Father, we just praise you for it. We thank you for multiplying our seed in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Okay. Let's receive the offering and so forth. Uh, men's Fellowship Breakfast. Remember, 8 o'clock, Saturday morning. This Saturday morning, Roger's ready. I'm ready. Robert's ready. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so all men that want a good, hearty men's breakfast, show up this Saturday at 8 o'clock. And if you want to help in the kitchen, show up at about 6.30 in the morning. And uh, we have a lot of fun, us cooks, don't we? <laughs> you get to... Taste the food before you, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So come, and uh, so uh, Raymond, if you need a ride, let let us know uh, Saturday morning, and be ready uh, so we can get you here by eight. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's be dismissed. Keep thanking God for the miracle happening in your life.